one of the main things is that I really try to touch down with the guest or the guest, our staff, mm -hmm. is that we should always be opening the door for the guest mm -hmm. whenever they're leaving, creating that movie star moment, right? Yeah. Because in all honesty, it's like, when is the last time that you've been out to a restaurant where somebody opened the door for you, whether it's upon entrance or exit? Hey guys, this is Sid Patel, CEO of Beverage Trade Network and Sommelier's Choice Awards. We are live from San Francisco at the judging of Sommelier's Choice Awards. I have Amber here with me. She's been a sommelier in this area and now a general manager at the lodge and resort, right? Assistant general manager, yeah. Great, thanks Amber. Thanks for joining me here. I appreciate Absolutely. you coming in. Thanks for having me, Sid. Great. So let's uh, talk about hospitality, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think we are all in the business of hospitality and it's very important uh, to create this amazing experience for the guest. Mm -hmm. I would love to ask you, how do you define good hospitality? That's a loaded question. Uh, all across the board, good hospitality at the base of its existence is making people feel welcome, for one, anticipating their needs before they even need it. That's I would also say just making that connection with the guest is of high importance. For instance, last night I had an incredible dining experience at the Morris Whenever I had walked in, I was talking to their chef about how I intended to go to their chartreuse dinner the past week. And I was like, unfortunately, things got in the way, but I've always wanted to come and dine with you guys. And he acknowledged that, show me around. And then the very first thing that happened whenever we were set down in the dining room, he had sent over an extra that was from on their menu from the chartreuse dinner. And he was like, this is a chartreuse infused pate. And for one, it was absolutely amazing. But two, he was anticipating my needs mm. before I knew I even needed that. So. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. How? Uh, what kind of body language, or how, what was he reading? How did he come up with the solution? Like, did they, mm -hmm. did he ask, uh, lead you to some questions? Mm -hmm. He uh, and I had just had a brief conversation by the chef's line whenever I came in, and we had just you know exchanged pleasantries. Um, I explained why I was there and how I had heard of the Morris, and then we chatted about the chartreuse. Nice. And whenever I sat down, he had guided us over with the server and just sent that out and was like, "We would love to have you." with this since you had a chance to wow. come in and actually have dinner. Amazing. So Amazing. it was a very nicely so, placed gift. So uh, great things you said there. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's give some examples of welcoming the mm -hmm. guests, right? Like uh, how do you, what techniques you use? Absolutely. So I'm currently positioned at Wooden Wisdom as the assistant general manager. It's also a Michael Mina property. So one of our big rules here for hospitality is that we have a 10 foot, five foot rule. So say for instance, you are at the host stand you have a guest coming in and they are 10 feet away, you always want to make sure that you acknowledge them with nonverbals. So whether you're smiling at them, whether mm. you're waving at them, whether you're giving them a polite nod, then at the five foot rule or five foot, I guess you could say spot, you are making sure that you are greeting them verbally, also giving them another smile, welcoming their in, having positive body language, just welcoming them in, in every way, shape or form. Very nice. And then of course, just physically walking to the table, whether you are pulling out a chair for them, placing the menus directly in their hand, of course, all subtle marketing techniques, but at the same time, the less that the guest has to do is the best. It's a good way to put it, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, once they uh, sit there and uh, mm -hmm. how do you approach for the menu and what are the few first words that come out? Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, I learned a really great lesson a long time ago was to always approach the guest whenever you are greeting a table with the words thank you. So mm -hmm. whether it's thank you for being here, thanks for joining us, thanks for coming in tonight. And then of course going into a brief spiel of who you are, what the restaurant is like, what the food program is mm -hmm. like. So just glancing over the menu with them, highlighting all the amazing attributes. But of course going over the wine list, for me I think it's really key, especially working and living around the Sonoma and Napa Valley area it's really, really important for you to offer suggestions, but also to read in as to whether or not the guests would like suggestions for mm -hmm. wine. Because of course we have so many regulars coming in that are winemakers or wine enthusiasts. Mm -hmm. And it's really important to see if they actually want help with the wine list or True. if they would just like a little company so, yeah. while they make their stuff. Because they already know their stuff. So you, you have to approach them very differently. Exactly, because you don't want to explain who I mean, you don't want to explain good Bordeaux to Robert Mondavi or anything, yeah. right? <laughs> Got it. And likewise, I mean, if you have a group of, you know, perhaps younger girls coming in, like early 20s who don't know a whole lot about wine, you also yeah. don't want to speak about first growth Bordeaux. You want to talk about it in layman's terms and be like, hey, 
this is juicy, fruity, delicious, or this is dry, this is red, mm. and so on. So it's really important to read the guest. Got it. And then you've got the order, right? So let's let's mm -hmm. walk into different uh, processes of mm -hmm. how we can touch on hospitality again and again. Absolutely. So uh, give, give me some uh, touch points with customers. You know, mm -hmm. when do you touch? How do you touch them? For me, again, it's all about anticipating the guest needs. For one, a really big thing that we do is asking about allergies at the very beginning of the meal before we even start talking about food. Mm -hmm. That way, of course, we can pivot into describing what the guests may actually enjoy or what's in their bandwidth, so to say, in terms of allergies. But within taking the order, I think it's really important too to anticipate their needs later on, like asking them after you know, they've made their dinner orders, like, hey, can I send the sommelier over for you in mm -hmm. order to discuss wine for your actual entree pairings, especially if you're getting into a two, three, four course dining experience mm -hmm. too on top of that. But ultimately I think it's just anticipating their needs again, whether it's as simple as you're working at a mom and pop Shake Shack and mm -hmm. before they know it, you've got mayonnaise, ketchup, mustard at the table to go with their burger without them even asking. Mm. Or if you're working at somewhere nice True. and fine dining and providing that steak knife before they have to ask for it with their entrees. Very nice. What about asking for a second glass? Like how do you uh, approach that? For me, I mean, the most simple and minimalistic way that you can ask is may I bring you another glass here. Of course, always coming through whenever the glass is around half empty or mm -hmm. a third empty. Because mm -hmm. of course, with the different timings within restaurants, it may take 15 minutes to get that glass of wine or it may take three minutes hmm. to get that glass of wine. Either way, if you are appropriately informed of what kind of timings your bar has or your sommelier has, mm -hmm. the guest, unless they want it to be this way, should never have an empty glass of wine, right? Mm. So whether you're saying, may I bring you another glass of wine or may I send the sommelier over for you to make your appropriate selection mm -hmm. for dinner, I think it's really important to be upon their needs again. Nice. Let's mm -hmm. talk about the wrap ups, right? Like mm -hmm. uh, giving them the bill, thanking mm -hmm. them and walking them out. Or, mm -hmm. you know, what are some good ways to uh, have a great ending? Create that report. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for me, one of the biggest things that we just looked over um, with Unreasonable Hospitality with Will Guadadera, mm -hmm. um, one of the biggest things was he had made this incredible point of whenever he was at 11 Madison Park was how the guests, whenever they were departing the restaurant, the reservationist or host team had their coats ready and waiting for them before the guests had even reached the front of the restaurant. Again, it's about anticipating guest needs Very all the way nice. through. So for us, one of the main things that I really like to approach with staff is that after we, you know, wish the guests to have a good night and constantly ask for feedback, that's a huge thing because of course, if we don't have feedback, we can't get better, right? Mm. Asking open-ended questions is a really important part, not asking how your steak tonight is always a good thing, mm. but asking what did you like about your steak tonight mm. is always a better question because you have so many details and so many fine points that can be covered by the guests instead of the guests responding, good, my that's, steak that's was very good. good. Yeah. But other than that, one of the main things, and you know, not to spiral off into another tangent, but one of the main things is that I really try to touch down with the guest or the guest, our staff, mm -hmm. is that we should always be opening the door for the guest whenever mm -hmm. they're leaving, creating that movie star moment, right? Yeah. Because in all honesty, it's like, when is the last time that you've been out to a restaurant where somebody opened the door for you, whether it's upon entrance or exit? True. Right? Yep. Can you remember a time? Uh, I don't actually these days, especially after COVID. I know. <laughs> it's so, so important. Yeah. Like just having that hospitality feel from the very beginning to the very end, like at the end of your dinner in your own home, yeah. you're probably opening up the door for the guests, right? True. Hi, welcome in. Yeah. And the same whenever you're leading, you're walking the guests out, you're having that final conversation. You're just exuding like happiness and you know, joyfulness. And that's exactly what we try to coach our staff on as well. Super, Amber. Thank yeah. you very much. These of are course. some amazing points. Thank you.